All right. So welcome everyone um, to the College of Engineering Fall 2024 Open House. This is for our MGen department, which houses our Information Systems Program, Information Systems Bridge Program, Software Engineering Systems, and Data Architecture and Management. Those are the four programs we're going to be discussing today. Next slide, Sam. So before we jump into introductions and the uh, programs, um, just wanted to cover our code of contact with everybody. Um, this isn't meant to scare anyone, it's just to inform you all that this is an informative session. Um, it's meant to uh, address your questions and inquiries. So um, all of you do need to adhere to this, even though you are not current students of Northeastern yet, fingers crossed for you all. Um, so yes, just this is a fun, informal, uh, informative session. Um, please put your questions in the Q&A. We're more than happy to answer them. Um, but any egregious or disruptive behavior will not be tolerated. So with that, I will pass it to my colleague, Sam, uh, to kick us off with the programs. Thanks so much, Kelsey, and welcome, everyone. And thanks for attending this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you might be joining us from. Uh, my name is Sam Casey. I'm an administrator with the Multidisciplinary Graduate Engineering Department. And today uh, we're going to do some program overviews, talk about a few of the programs that we run in our department. Uh, you'll hear from one of our graduate ambassadors towards the end of our, um, uh, our presentation today. And Kelsey will hop back on and speak a little bit more about the admissions process. And then hopefully if we have enough time, we'll open it up for a little bit of Q&A. Um, so please, if you have any questions, you know, you can type them in the box, but we will address those uh, at the at the conclusion of the slide deck. So starting with our department directors, our unit is led by Dr. Kao Bugrara, who's the executive director of the MGen department. We also have Dr. Marikla Parazzi, the program director of the Information Systems Bridge and Data Architecture and Management Programs as well as Dr. Rolando Herrero, our program director of the Telecommunication Systems Program. You'll see my picture there on the left. Uh, some of our department administrators include myself, Aaron Macri, Kim Cortez, Farzani Irani, and Kaylee Sykowski. These are just some people that you'd be interacting with throughout the course of your studies here. Um, and of course, we have our graduate student services team. Uh, we have um, a network of campuses, which I'll get into a little bit further on in the presentation. Um, but at, at each campus, we do have dedicated student service uh, advisors who deal with students as it relates to their academics, course registration, your graduation requirements, should you go on academic probation, or just anything that really has to do with your academics and throughout the program, they'd be the person who you'd be in contact with. For our international students, they're your CBIS contact, and they work with OGS on academic matters that might affect a student's visa. They also communicate effectively with our students, sending out timely reminders, talking about events and opportunities. Um, so if you're in the program, it's always good to keep in touch on your email because they send out a lot of notifications on things of these matters. So moving on to who we are as a program, and we're going to really focus on the information systems, information systems bridge, data architecture and management, and software engineering systems programs. So starting with our mission statement, we want to produce more effective software engineers who are substantially more capable than ever of addressing the needs of digital society in terms of time, cost, and quality. We will accomplish this by revolutionizing the way software is designed and evolved over time. We believe software is a systems engineering challenge rather than a coding problem. So our value proposition to our target audience, you guys who are here today, for our engineers in the crowd, we take you from any background you might have in the engineering space and we'll turn you into a well-rounded software engineer. For graduates coming from maybe more of a social and humanity backgrounds, we turn you into technical problem solvers that cater to the needs of digital society in healthcare, finance, infrastructure, sustainability, and more. For our software engineers, we equip you with new best practices of how to think of software as holistic systems challenges and not coding problems. And for people from business and finance, it's about how to design build and manage digital finance systems of the future. 
So some of our strengths as a unit. Since 2007, we have a history of success in producing quality software engineers that address industry software application needs. We have flexibility within our department. We put you as the student in the driver's seat of how you want to structure and pursue your education. I'll be discussing a lot of that when we get to our program requirements. Relevance, we have courses that align with current trends in the marketplace. Our directors year in and year out are looking to propose and develop new courses in the the engineering space that we can put into our program that you as the student will be able to take. We have a unique way in using in teaching coding techniques that are accessible to broader audiences of students uh, that might apply to some of our bridge students. Our, teacher, our teachers have strong industrial backgrounds. A lot of our adjunct faculty are coming right from their nine to five jobs into the classroom uh, to teach and present for you guys. So a lot of relevant experience in today's market. An integrative model where academics, employers, and students are tightly coupled. Moving forward, what can you expect in the years to come from our unit? We're establishing more effective software engineering techniques, less coding, more systems and socio-technical approaches more of an emphasis on skills for value engineering into software, applications as networks of participating entities, and ecosystem platforms and design approaches. We have a more focus on a digital finance and trust computing with crypto fraud and risk techniques, and we're more effective ways of engineering safety and security controls into software. So what are students who have been through the program saying about what we do? Well, some of our testimonials say that we have a pathway to different careers in the engineering field, software engineering, full stack development, data analysts, product management, business intelligence, user experience design. These are the areas and the fields that our students are leaving and going into in the US workforce. We have supportive faculty who invest in their students. Our adjunct faculty are leaders in the current tech space and they'll ship their curriculum to match industry trends. Courses that we were running five years ago might be a little bit different now based on where the market is. We have a curriculum that takes students through a step-by-step -step in the areas you'll need to know how to be knowledgeable in as you prep to enter the workforce. We have hands-on coursework, a lot of which is project-based, that helps students utilize the skills they are learning. It's a mix of technical and non-technical courses that help students prepare to communicate in the job force. And we prepare students for that job search. Students are creating content in their classes that have real world applications. You're building a, a portfolio of work that you can present in interviews, right? A lot of the draw is with our co-op programs, right? And, and, and what Northeastern does to provide students uh, the support and the means to jump into a full-time opportunity upon graduating. We can do this in these classes um, and, and we feel we're very confident that we give you the tools to be successful. So some of the different topics that are explored and you'll see this graph in, in terms of how they intersect with each other. Some of our people skills uh, classes like business analysis, project planning, organizational change, agile development, quality assurance, and some of our financial systems courses. These are softer topics for our students, but they teach you how to effect effectively communicate in the US workforce. We, the engineering skills, we have classes in application de design and development, user experience, mobile computing, big data engineering, cloud computing, machine learning and data science, cybersecurity, virtual reality, blockchain, digital business, business intelligence, and cognitive computing, and cognitive computing. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of some of the different uh, topics and there are a lot of courses within each of these topics that you can choose from that are a little more specific. This Venn diagram is sort of to show you where we see ourselves. We're at the intersection of IT management, business complexity, and software methods tools. And what can you expect? Well, we have eight campuses and across those eight campuses in our network, we have 19, 19 full-time faculty members. Okay, so people whose full time job is Northeastern University and working with our students. We have over 50 adjunct faculty from industry. So I, I've talked about them, our lecturers who are working in the workforce and then coming and teaching in our classrooms. 
We have co-op coordinators at each campus, right? Co-op, like I said, is such a draw for our unit and such a draw from Northeastern in general. We have co-op coordinators who are gonna be there to support you, work on your resume, build your LinkedIn profile, teach you how to network, and help hopefully prepare you for interviews and getting jobs. We have different models of learning from traditional, which is in the classroom with your professor. We have online courses where you can sit from at home at your couch and uh, take synchronous uh, lectures with our faculty, and we have live cast models of learning, which is where we're able to get you as a student in the, in the classroom with, with professors who are live streaming to that campus. So just because you're a student in Seattle, you might have access to our professors in Vancouver or Arlington. We have over 60 electives that you can choose from, right? From fall to summer to spring to summer one, summer two, we have all these different semesters as well that course offerings are available and you can take classes as, as a student. And again, you'll you'll hear this emphasized throughout, throughout your search of, of is Northeastern right for you? And even when you're here, as a student, we really try to give you the ability to map your own academic path. So I've talked about our network of campuses. Where are we located? MGen programs are not limited to just one campus. We currently have, uh, our programs in Boston. So we have MSIS, IS Bridge, Software Engineering, and DAMG, the Data Architecture and Management Program. We have our Seattle campus, San Jose, Toronto, Canada, Arlington, Vancouver, uh, Oakland, and Miami. So two campuses in Canada, and then the rest are located in the, in the United States. And then in the spring, we're also launching a campus in Portland, Maine, which is very exciting for us. And you can see all the different uh, where each of the programs are located at those campuses. So is, if that is of interest of you, you can take note of the program that you're hoping to join, as well as the different campuses in which they're offered. All right, so now I'm going to jump into each program so a little bit more specifically. Um, and we're going to start with information systems program. This is our largest program uh, across all of our campuses. So for the information systems program, you'll be embarking on an IT leadership pathway as a more evolved and dynamic software engineer. You'll learn how to solve problems and design groundbreaking software solutions that fit within the complexities of the business world and solve the humanistic needs of the people who use them. You'll be able to tailor your degree to your own talents and your career goals. With that flexible curriculum, you'll develop a strong technical ability through diverse, academically rigorous courses that are taught by our renowned faculty. It's a 32 credit program, so typically it's about two to two and a half years to complete. IS is really about how we build applications, right? We talked about being at the intersection of technology, programming, social life. It's about focusing on building those applications for the real world, okay? So again, um, 32 credit hour program and going into those degree requirements for IS students. Again, this is an overview. You'll have plenty of time to look at this by the time you're a student, but give you a general outline and speak to some of that flexibility. So we have one core requirement for students who to take in their first semester. It's the application engineering and development course that has a co-requisite lab attached to it. Following that, you'll have 28 remaining semester hours to complete your degree. 16 of those credit hours must come from the program code of INFO. Those are our information systems uh, classes. So 16 of those credit hours must come from that code. And the remaining ones can come, the, the remaining 12 can come from our software engineering courses, the CSYE, DAMG, our data architecture and management courses, our tele, our telecommunication network courses, or if you love the information systems classes so much, you can just take all info courses. So you're not gonna see too many specific courses outlined. It's that flexibility we give you and the different topics that exist within those program codes for our IS students. IS Bridge. So our IS Bridge program is a relatively new program. It's a few years old, and it's for our students with non-STEM undergraduate degrees. So students who have an English degree, finance, law, policy, marketing, really anything you can think of, have the opportunity to join our IS Bridge program. You will become a problem solver. You're taking a seat at the table as industries launch into a digitized future. 
You'll be prepared to take on a new role in your organization as you go beyond technical engineering, becoming a leader in creating and delivering systems that are safe, secure, and reliable. Okay. So bridge, these are our non-engineers. You're going to, uh, I'm going to get into the specifics of the program. You will note it's a 40 credit program. This is the only uh, program that I'll be speaking on. That is a that is eight extra credit hours that are needed in order to graduate. And again, because it's for those students who are coming from that non-engineering background, we do have two core classes that prep you in your first semester to hop right into the program. Getting into those requirements. Uh, for IS Bridge, in your first semester, you'll be taking Info 5001 and 5002. So that's Application Modeling and Design and our Introduction to Python for Information Systems. These are foundational courses that will help prepare you for the remaining of your studies. We then, uh, the last core requirement for our IS Bridge students is that Application Engineering and Development uh, course with the co-requisite lab, just like our IS students. So a lot of overlap. The only difference is really those two uh, courses, the 5001 and 5002. Bridge does have restricted electives. Um, so there's nine courses you'll see here. We've recently expanded this, which I think is really great for our students in this, in this program. Um, so from that list of nine courses, you must complete three of them required. Okay, so that's why they're called restricted electives. Um, you'll see courses in data management, database design, web design, program structure and algorithms, business analysis, planning and managing software quality control and management, smartphones, agile software development, and managerial communications for engineers. So we do have some technical courses there and some non-technical courses. So again, you have the decision if you are a bridge student to choose which three of those you prefer to take. Now, you could take more than just those three because the remaining 16 elective hours are going to come from any of those program codes, right? CSYE, DAMG, Info, and or Tele. So again, a lot of flexibility within these program codes for you to choose from. Moving on to software engineering systems. So software engineering systems is heavily technical. Um, so keep that in mind. It has a lot to do with programming and platform talent. Um, it's a classical, it's a classical, it's a classic software program, okay? So this shapes our more technically advanced students to be intuitive problem solvers, experienced engineering architects, and result-focused leaders who will have a great impact at the intersection of computer science, engineering, and ethics. Students study the fundamentals of logical computing formulation and program construction, as well as the mathematical modeling and analysis of algorithms, an essential aspect of data science analytics. Our program offers a multitude of courses in big data engineering and analytics, in addition to supplementary courses with the intention to deliver data analytics results in a meaningful way to management. So data management, advanced data management business intelligence, column databases, data science, Scala, multi-thread concurrent computing, all that. It is a 32 credit hour program. Again, that's pretty standard uh, minus the IS Bridge program. Um, so that typically equates to about eight courses. So software engineering systems, you do have two core classes. Um, the concept of object-oriented design based around our Java programming, that's in your first semester. In your second semester, you will complete program structure and algorithms. That's your second core class, okay? Um, after that, though, that flexibility jumps in. Electives, you need to, in, in order to graduate and, and finish the remainder 24 credit hours that you have to take, you must take 12 of those 24 from the CSYE program code. CSYE is uh, the Software Engineering Systems Program Code. Um, so 12, 12 hours must be completed. And then the other 12 to get to that uh, 24 um, of electives can come from any of the CSYE, BAMG, Info, and Tele. Um, I'm probably making it more complicated than it is. It's a lot more flexible and not something right now you have to be super concerned with, given that we're in the open house stages. And these things are really hit home uh, when you do come on campus as a student, your advisors are, are, are always keeping you aware of where you need to be. Um, and we have our catalog to refer this to. But again, just to give you a general idea 
of, of, of what to expect throughout the time uh, in the program. And finally, our data architecture and management program. So our DAMG students will obtain a holistic knowledge and the technical skills to engineer big data systems, curate data, and integrate and process data so that data scientists and business analysts can have access and interpret data in context. You're providing meaningful results to management. You'll gain the ability to perform complex aggregations for a variety and vast array of data that will be applicable in any industry you choose to work. You're marrying business intelligence, data warehousing, and software engineering. This program provides you with sought after knowledge, all while exploring machine learning techniques that will prepare you for the next generation of data integration tools. We're building data engineers in the data architecture program. It's designed to really pre prepare you for that evolving and growing field of data engineering. And it's not so much we're focusing on algorithmic coding, it's really more on becoming first-class data engineers. We're not bound by the application and algorithmic courses that you might see in IS or software engineering system. Okay, it's a 32 credit hour program. Now, this one has the most core requirements. So there are four, and you'll see that. The first two, the data science engineering with Python and data management and database design, these are taken in your first semester. They're the foundational courses. They serve as prerequisites for a lot of the other classes you'll take. And then you have the option. You can jump right into the next two um, in your first, in your second semester, the big data architecture and governance and the designing advanced data architectures for business intelligence, or you can split those up throughout the remainder of the semesters that you're in the program. If you choose to do that, you can couple the electives with these courses, or you can take the electives following these, these core classes. But from an elective standpoint, the 16 credit hours that remain from the program can be taken from any of the four program codes I've been really uh, speaking on, the CSYE, DAMG, Info, and or Tele program codes. Okay, so a lot of options, even though these ones do have uh, four core classes, which make up half of the degree requirements. All right, so I've spoken a little bit and given a pretty general overview on some of the programs and hopefully I've given you a little more insights into what to expect. But now I'm gonna jump in and do a brief overview of our uh, cooperative education, specifically MGEN's co-op program. Uh, speak generally on it, because I know that's a huge reason for all of yeah. you uh, attending or looking to maybe attend Northeastern. So co-op ranked number one in 2024 uh, from the U.S. Uh, news and World Report rankings in terms of co-ops and internships. The MGEN Experiential Learning, our co-op program, so we are located in high-tech hubs. I've spoken on our um, our different campuses, Boston, Silicon Valley, Oakland, Seattle, Arlington, Toronto, Miami, Vancouver. These are really vibrant areas for tech in the United States. You're not limited to taking co-ops just at your campus. You can take it wherever you want, whether it's in the United States or potential an international and global co-op. Our options are four, six, and eight months. And some of the companies that we work on and work with and send students to on a semester by semester base is Google, Fidelity, Amazon, Mass General Hospital, Tesla, Apple, and so much more. Probably familiar names that you've heard, right? So very exciting companies to work for and that our students are getting co-ops at. Um, an overview in terms of what co-op will bring to you, we do have an ENCP 6000 course, a career management for engineers. This is required for co-op, so it's a one credit course you would be adding to uh, your Rolodex of academic classes. Um, it is required for co-op eligibility, um, and you'll be able to take it in your first or second semester. The value of this course is that you're learning industry trends and the U.S. job market through speaker series. You'll understand the time and dedication it takes to get a co-op and succeed once you're on that co-op. You have a co-op advisor who will be available to give you tools, guidance, and support throughout the process. So some of the learning objectives that you'll be doing in this one credit course, you'll be creating your personal identity with a positioning statement and your resume. 
you're searching for a career relevant co-op using search tools, LinkedIn, networking, and professional writing. And you're going to be able to get a co-op through behavioral and technical interviewing. You'll be able to succeed on co-op through the practice of engineering ethics and professional behavior, as well as employing the right mindset on the job. So go to the next slide here. Let me, sorry, I'm just gonna exit out for a quick second here. Uh, Kelsey, can you still see the screen? Yes, it's showing student run uh, organization. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it wasn't going ahead. Um, so again, we do have some student run organizations here. Um, our Husky Sisters Code and our peer mentorship group. I'm just going to speak briefly on this. Um, so these are things that you can do as extracurriculars within um, within your studies. Again, it wouldn't count towards your credit or your degree requirements. Um, but one of them is our, his, our Husky Sisters Code. This was started, anyone is eligible to join, but this was started by some of our female engineers in the program. And you'll see their mission statement there, uh, encouraging uh, the fellow students over a broad spectrum, right from fundamental technical skills to being able to articulate and be confident about expressing their ideas and beliefs, enabling you to tap into your potential wisdom and apply it to real world problem solving. So again, very exciting. This is something, and and one of the great things I think about our department is you're not limited to this, right? If you have an idea, you have the ability to start this if you so choose. We have a peer mentorship program where we pair students according to their professional field of interest and similar tech skills with students who successfully complete their co-op journey in the same field of interest. So what will you do? You'll connect with mentors weekly to check in on your career goals, academic pursuit, and co-op search process. You can ask them questions, receive advice, because they've been through it. You can take initiative and be responsible for your own career development and planning. Keep any commitments that are made and being receptive to feedback is certainly important, uh, not just in the mentorship program, but, but just in general, right? This is gonna be, this is a big uh, taking on for you as a student, especially many of our international students coming to one of our campuses. Um, so just being able um, to be flexible and learn and continue to grow during your time here um, to be able to accomplish all of your goals. We do have an FAQ page for our, our department. Um, we have a QR code there you can scan. Um, and please feel free to visit it. It answers a lot of questions you might have uh, following this open house. Um, there is a link there if you choose to use that as well or take a screenshot of it. Um, but please, please feel free to check it out. Um, hopefully, uh, it can provide some insights on things you might have if they're not, if they haven't been answered in this session. We also have social media presence, so please feel free to follow us on Facebook. You can search for the Northeastern University Multidisciplinary Graduate Engineering Dash MGen um, on LinkedIn. Please connect with us using Northeastern University Information Systems or the Northeastern University Graduate School of Engineering Co-op page. And on Instagram, you can find us at nu underscore mgen. So please feel free to hop on and give us a follow. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our graduate student ambassador. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Um... Hi, everyone. So I'm not one of the graduate student ambassadors, but I'm here to introduce them. Um, so my name is Kelsey Noriega. I'm one of the assistant directors for the grad admissions team here at the College of Engineering. Um, and we have three grad ambassadors from the MGen department with us today, um, Forum, Jesswin, and Neha. Um, so they are here to assist you with program questions, what to expect in your new city and campus, um, they can help you with housing tips and tricks. They won't be able to secure you housing, but they can certainly help answer your questions and provide their experience. Um, so with that, um, I'd love to have each of you um, introduce yourself, tell us what program and campus you are on um, and why you chose Northeastern and the particular program and campus. So Forum, uh, let's start with you. 
Yes. So hello everyone. I am Forum and I am graduate student ambassador for software engine systems and I currently am in Boston campus and uh, Sam already covered most of it. Uh, I uh, I joined software engine systems because I was keen to learn how to solve real world problems uh, using uh using the courses which are taught by great professors and uh, as you already said uh we are offered multiple courses uh, for example you can choose uh, data science courses or you can go towards cloud and there are multiple options from which uh own pathway so yeah thanks for him Jesswin, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is Jesswin Hill, and um, I'm basically from the Toronto campus. I'm the campus ambassador for the Information Systems program. Again, uh, just like Forum said, like one of the very first things that I noted before coming here was the was the ranking for the university and the branding that we have because Northeastern as a campus is known worldwide and definitely. It gives a lot of advantage on your profile. It it gives you a heads up when you're applying for jobs and everything. And the second thing that I really considered while applying for information systems is a balance between something that I've done in the past and something that I want to do. So definitely, I have done computer science as a bachelor's, and uh, but I also wanted to explore something like a UX design or something like a designing course and everything. Although, but not losing. Uh, the access towards the computer science stream. So information systems were that balance for me, which gave me the option to choose data science, gave me the option to choose um, UX design. It gave me the option to go with data management systems and everything and and system, I can basically plan my courses accordingly. So that's pretty much what it was. And uh, I, I'm at my last semester and I have to say that it was one heck of an experience. So definitely you guys would love it to go ahead with that as well. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Thanks, Jasmin. And last but not least, Neha, can you say hello? Hey guys, hi. I'm Neha Gopanath. I'm currently pursuing my master's in information system at Northeastern University at Lincoln campus. So uh, why I chose Northeastern was that uh, after working in IT, uh, uh, after completing my bachelor's, I wanted to have a blend of uh, technical as well as the management too. Uh, so, and the Northeastern exactly gave me that. So it has a very good blend of technical and business courses in the information system program. It helped me like gain my skills in system architecture, data management, IT solutions, and business strategies. So, and it gave me a good amount of resources and, uh, and co-op opportunities that I loved and uh, cherished my experience. So I'm looking, I'm, I'm currently in my se second year of the program and uh, I have, I have taken a good blend of courses to this time. So I'm just looking forward to a great, exciting more programs and, and I would really welcome you all too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jasmine, since you are in your last semester, I imagine you're doing the, the job hunting at the moment. Um, what are you hoping to find in terms of a full-time job? What are your career aspirations as you're looking? Uh, so basically I'm looking towards a position as a business analyst because, uh, that's, that's kind of a role that, uh, led to the experiences that I've had. Like I was working with uh, as a part-time in a company here, it's called Bell. So what I was doing is like, basically we work as a retail consultant over there and we use the data management tools like Power BI and all of those, which we can implement while we are working as a business analyst or maybe as a data analyst or consultants. So these kind of tools that I've used in the past, I just want to use it when I'm actually working in the, uh, in the uh in the company environments and everything so definitely i'm looking for roles which 
uh, help me use those tools which I have used in the past. Because at the end of the day, I'm a fresher, and uh, it's it's always safe to start from something which you're comfortable with, and then start doing which is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. That's how it goes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, and Neha, you just finished a co-op over the summer. Um, can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about your experience looking for co-op and then the actual co-op experience itself? Yeah, so uh, uh, looking for co-op experience was hard because of the market trend, how it was going down. But I would say that it was not uh, it was not difficult. You should be looking. You should be applying to the uh, job uh, job applications whenever you are free. And I would suggest con consistency is one of a key to get into a co-op. And uh, and my experience in co-op was I, I I had a three months in a co-op and uh, as a business analyst intern. So uh, basically the requirements for the business analyst interns usually tends to differ from company to company. And uh, I had an opportunity to uh, work on a Salesforce system. And, um, and I got to interact with a lot of cross three uh, cross uh, team people uh, and I had to figure out on the business requirements and all that stuff. It, it was amazing. I mean, I got to interact with all the departments and stay connected with them and uh, build on a project to, to make the development for the business was really good. Awesome. And Forum, there's a question that popped up in the Q&A for you. Um, you're based in Boston, and could you share how you found housing when you moved to Boston um, and any sort of tips or recommendations for securing housing in Boston? Uh, yes. So from Northeast only, there is a, there is a club or an organization which is called F Off Campus Housing. Uh, they have really... Uh, they have information on their website already. And uh, for tips, I would suggest that you should look at three to four things, which are, well, first is your budget. Second is uh, the area you want to live in and uh, and the, tra the transportation from your house to the university. So these are uh, simple three to four things which could help you figure out uh, where you want to live in and yeah so there are leases uh there are six months 12 months etc so uh yeah these are basic tips and so uh off-campus housing has a database and uh sheets kind of where you can find roommate or flatmate or uh, anything of that sort they have really huge database and they have uh contacts for realtors as well. Thank you. Sam, next slide, please. Awesome. Well, thank you, Forum, Jaswin, and Neha for talking about your experiences a little bit more. Um, some more uh, items that ambassadors can and cannot assist with. Um, so again, ambassadors can answer your questions about department and program specifics, uh, the student experience and their perspective, um, the student groups that they're part of, coursework in the sense of they can talk about um, the courses that they have taken, courses that they've enjoyed, faculty that they've um, been taught by. They can talk about the relocating process and things to take advantage of during your time at Northeastern. Um, ambassadors are not able to answer questions about application eligibility or profile reviews. That is something that you can reach out to the admissions team for. Um, nor can they ask uh, answer questions about your admission decision or status. Again, that is a question for the admissions team. Um, while they can talk about coursework, ambassadors are not able to actually register you for courses or assist with registration and troubleshooting. Um, if you're an international student, our international student ambassadors can certainly talk about their process again, how the process was and the experience was for them. Um, but again, they can't process your I-20 or they can't talk about your visa status. They do not have access to that. Um, and anything with payment, your My Northeastern account or IT issues or website issues, 
again, ambassadors do not have access to that. Um, so those are most likely going to be questions that you'll need to reach out to IT for. Next. We do have quite a few opportunities for engagement with the ambassadors. Um, we have our website, which was on about two slides ago, um, and it's listed here as well for you. We are on social media. You can reach out via WhatsApp, Weibo, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. Uh, the ambassadors participate in many events, such as these open houses, um, and you can find recordings of these on our YouTube channel. This session is being recorded and will be available also on YouTube. Uh, they respond to our student inquiry form found on the COE admissions page, and you can also email them at coeambassadors at listserv.neu.edu. This has also been updated to coeambassadors at northeastern.edu. Both should work, but if you have any issues, just let us know um, through social media or another channel. Next. So next steps. Where are you in the process? So if you are a prospective student, your next step is to submit an application. Um, so August 15th was um, the deadline for all international students applying to our Canadian campuses. October 1st is our deadline for all international students applying to the US campuses. And December 1st is our deadline for all domestic students. We also have fall 2025 applications open and available. So if you're interested in those programs, um, December 1st is the deadline for all PhD applicants. Um, this has also been updated, so it should be December 1st for our MS um, students as well. And then June 1st is our, our final deadline. Next. So your admissions requirements, we are offering an application fee waiver for you all today. It is apply COE 2025. Um, so if you have not yet applied, you can use this fee waiver. If you have already submitted an application, unfortunately, this is not retroactive. So just keep that in mind. Um, we do require two layers of recommendation, unofficial transcripts, statement of purpose, resume. The GRE is optional, so you do not need to submit the GRE. However, if you think it would strengthen your application, you're more than welcome to. And if you are an international student who does not meet our English language uh, test waiver, we do require either IELTS, TOEFL, or Duolingo. Next. So these are the instructions for uh, supplying the uh, application fee waiver code. It is uh, capitalization specific. So as you see it on your screen right now is exactly how you should input it into the application. Where you will input this is in the applicant information tab when you're completing your application. So once you are on the application information tab, you would scroll past the yes or no questions and answer yes to the question asking if you have a fee waiver code. Once the box appears, you input the code. Again, it is case sensitive, so it must be entered exactly as it appears above. If not, it will not go through and you will be required to pay the application fee. Next. So keep in touch with us. Um, if you are interested in keeping touch with the college in general, we have several uh, social media sites as well. These are different from the ambassador sites, but all of them have really great information on news, activities, and communications. We have our COE and grad admissions websites listed here. We have an FAQ page as well to answer your questions. If you need to get in touch with the admissions office, it is coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu. And again, the COE student ambassador email is there as well. So before we jump into Q&A, um, I just wanted to let folks know that we do have some scholarships available for some upcoming programs in the MGen department, which is very exciting. Um, so if you are interested in the MS and in Information Systems in Miami for spring 2025, there is a 50-50% scholarship. Um, the MS and in Information Systems in Portland and the MS Information Systems Bridge programs in Portland are both offering a $25,000 Alphonse scholarship for spring 25 and fall 2025 intakes. 
Information Systems Bridge in Arlington for spring 2025 has a 25% scholarship. And the MS in Information Systems Bridge in Toronto for spring 2025 also has a 25% tuition scholarship. So if you apply to any of these programs at these specific campuses, um, these program slash campus launch scholarships should automatically be applied. So there's no separate application for that. So with that being said, um, we are open to the Q&A now. I see a couple have already been answered. Um, so just to refresh, because I don't believe everyone can see the Q&A except for the hosts and panelists. Um, there is a question about when do the classes start for spring 2025? Um, those will start in roughly the second week of January. Spring 25 uh, semester starts in January. Um, let's see. We also have a question. Um, if they are, a student is taking online courses, when it is time for graduation, do they need to be physically present for the graduation ceremony? Sam, are you able to take that? Um, yeah, so I, I think there might be confusion. So it is... The programs we're talking about are on ground uh, presence in general. Um, you do. We have individual courses within each semester that you can take. Um, if you are an international student, if you take an if you take an online class, typically students take two classes per semester. Um, if you're a full time student, if you take an online course, you need to pair it <clears throat> with an on ground course. Um, so you won't. Let's say you're not going to be taking all 32 credits online um, if you're if you're joining one of our programs here. So um, it doesn't really factor in for graduation. I mean, typically uh, students want to attend graduation. It's not necessarily required uh, to attend graduation, but their attending graduation doesn't necessarily have to do with the online courses you take. But online courses are. Uh, there are a few options each semester that you can you can enroll in one as long as you pair it with an on ground class. Awesome. Um, there is a question about is there an application fee waiver code for PhD applicants? Yes, the code that was provided today should be applicable to PhD applicants as well. However, please note that the programs we discussed in this session are all master's level. There is no PhD component for any of the programs that we talked about specifically in the session, although we do offer PhD programs in other departments. Um, let's see. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science, but I've been handling my family business ever since I left school. Can I use two of my lecturers as recommendations? So lecturers from computer science undergrad, I believe. And yes, that should be fine. We accept recommendations, uh, academic recommendations, professional recommendations, really whoever can speak best to your abilities as a potential graduate student um, in these programs would be best for a recommender. And two, we do require two. So if you have two lecturers and they're both academic, that's great. If you have two professional, that also works. Um, combination of one professional, one academic, Again, whoever can best speak to your abilities for uh, graduate school. Let's see. Great questions coming in. Um, hi, Sam. You mentioned that international students can contact through CVIS contact in OGS. What do, exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, so OGS, the Office of Global Services at Northeastern and CVIS Student Exchange Visitor information system, maybe I don't. Is that I think that's what it is. The um, they're just they're just they they work on compliance for our students. Um, you know, a lot of times our our the international students they need that um visa requirements and what that's really your student service advisor is just can work with them, uh, work with those departments to make sure that you're in good academic standing. Um, and that you're meeting your visa requirements as it relates to to being in the country and taking classes. So um, probably not something right now you'd really need to worry about, I don't think. Um, I can't really speak, I'm not an expert in that area, but your advisor uh, works with those departments uh, at Northeastern. 
Awesome. Um, there's a question on the Duolingo English test score. So the requirement for the Duolingo uh, test for your application, uh, minimum score requirement is 115. Um, so you will need to meet that minimum score requirement on Duolingo. Um, for IELTS, it is a 7.0. And for TOEFL, it is a minimum of... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong thing. <laughs> it's different for different programs. I apologize. Um, minimum score requirement for the programs discussed in this session. Um, if you take the TOEFL, it is a 79 overall on the internet-based TOEFL exam, a 6.5 overall for IELTS, and a 105, 105 on Duolingo. So you need to meet at least those minimum scores on your English language proficiency test to be eligible to be admitted into these programs. Again, this is just one part of the application review process. So um, they, just because you meet the minimum score requirement for these English language tests does not mean you will be guaranteed admission, but you need at least those scores um, for consideration. All right, a couple more questions. Um, are there any funding opportunities for MS software engineering systems? Yes. So we know that uh, graduate school is a large investment for our students financially. Um, we do offer um, funding review automatically. So there's no separate application to apply for funding. Um, most of the time, international students will um, borrow funding if they're not able to receive scholarships for the entire amount. Um, the majority of our MS level applicants and candidates um, are considered for partial merit-based tuition scholarships, which means it's based on the strength of your application compared to the rest of those who are admitted. Um, and as I said, it's partial. So a lot of international students will borrow um, and use personal loans or personal funding to offset the rest um, of that. But you do go through an automatic uh, scholarship and funding consideration process if you are admitted to the programs. All right. Um, is GRE or GMAT required? Uh, it is not. Um, we only look at GRE scores, not the GMAT for these programs. If you do take the GRE and you do submit your GRE scores, however, they will be considered as part of your application. So we highly recommend that you um, submit GRE scores only if you believe they will strengthen your application. If you do not feel confident in your GRE scores and feel that they may impact um, your, your application review may weaken your application, then we suggest leaving the GRE scores off of your application and that will not penalize you. Um, is it recommended to contact a professor of interest before applying to these programs? Sam? I would say no. Probably. I mean, there's nothing that's necessarily stopping you, but I think at this, if you're talking about the, the professors in the department, um, I just want to be realistic that they might not respond because usually you need a Northeastern email to garner their attention. Um, but, you know, we, there's a lot of resources online on the Northeastern websites, the catalog pages, the FAQs. Uh, page for MGen that can hopefully give you some insights into and answer some of the questions that you might have. Um, I, that that would be my recommendation if I'm trying to set a realistic expectation for you in terms of trying to find some information. And the last question in the chat, which might be all we have time for, is just if I could repeat the campus scholarships offered. Yes, certainly. And again, this session is recorded and you should have access to it following um, I believe at, by at least the end of the week, it might not be immediately after this session, um, but we will be able to provide you with recordings. So you'll be able to hear it as many times as you need. But um, if you are applying to the MS Information Systems Program in Miami for the spring 2025 semester, you will receive a 50% uh, program campus launch scholarship. If you are applying to the MS Information Systems Program or the MS Information Systems Bridge Program in Portland, Maine for either spring 2025, which is the first term that we will be launching that program, or fall 2025, there is a $25,000 Alphonse scholarship available. If you are applying to the MS in Information Systems Bridge 
program in Arlington for spring 2025, there is a 25% tuition scholarship. And if you are applying to the MS in Information Systems Bridge program in Toronto for spring 2025, there is also a 25% tuition discount for that program and campus combo. So again, these are specific to uh, program campus combinations. Um, but if you apply to any of them and you are admitted, then you should receive those scholarships that I just listed. So with that, uh, we are just about at time um, and all the questions in the Q&A have been answered. So I want to say thank you so much to Sam, Forum, Jesswin, and Neha, and to all of you for joining us. Um, we look forward to answering your questions, to reviewing your applications that you submit. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to the ambassadors, to myself and the admissions team. Um, we will be sending this recording for you all. Uh, wish you a wonderful rest of your day, evening, wherever you might be joining us in the world. Um, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day.